What does it mean to wedge the clay? Okay, wedging the clay is when you mix the clay in order to get all the air bubbles out and to mix the sticky parts and the drier parts so they're all mixed together and make it nice and even. Describe the wedging process. Okay, well here's the wedging process. You want to use the heel of your hands, not the fingertips. You push the clay away from you and you curl it towards you. You're not flattening or folding it. You're just compressing and curling it. What's the next question? Why is it necessary to wedge the clay? Okay, you want to get all the air bubbles out and it, it makes it nice and dense so that you can uh, use the pottery wheel. Otherwise, without all the air bubbles out, you won't be able to make anything on the pottery wheel. What are two ways you can tell if the clay is wedging properly? Okay, I'm going to explain it. You push, curl, push, curl, push, curl the clay, right? You're making a spiral on the end. If you're making a spiral, when you look at this, see how it's a spiral? That means that you, you're wedging it properly. Okay, so I'm going to keep doing that. You need to make three spirals. So this is your second spiral, and there's your third spiral. Now, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to slam the clay, turn it over on the other side, slam it, turn it this way, slam it, turn it this way, slam it, turn it this way, slam it. So you've now compressed the clay into a very dense cube. Now, it's actually going to feel as if it's heavier now that it's been compressed into a dense cube. It's not heavier. It just has no air in it. It's kind of like if you took a one-pound rock and a one-pound sponge. The sponge is filled with air, and the rock has no air in it, so the, air, the rock is a lot smaller. Even though they weigh the same, the rock is denser. This weighs the same as it did before, but now it's denser because it's the same clay minus the air. So it actually looks a little smaller, and it feels a little heavier, even though it's not. That's how you tell. Okay. After wedging the clay, what do you do next? Okay, right now, come, come over here with the video camera. All right, we're going to go right over here to the wheel. This wheel is dry, but it's a little bit dusty. You may need to get a little closer. Um, it's dry, but it's a little bit dusty. That's okay. Most kids come over, the first thing they do is they sponge off the wheel. Don't do that. It needs to be dry. Take this piece of clay, slam it in the middle of the wheel. It's not quite in the center. Don't pick it up again or you'll break this wheel. Instead, push it into the middle. So it's exactly in the middle. Look at it, because there's rings here. You can tell when it's in the middle. Now, bring your chair up so it's touching the wheel. You need your chair really close. What's the next question? Describe how you center the piece of clay on the wheel. Excellent. That's what I want to do next. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take, I'm not going to touch the clay right now. I'm just going to take this sponge, and I'm going to empty it right over here. Okay? Now that it's sealed to the wheel, now I'm allowed to get it wet. I don't touch the clay. You're going to turn the wheel on fast. Okay? Now, I need to take my elbows and put them either on this splash pan or on my lap. My chair should be touching the wheel. You may need to back up so you can get my elbows and where, how close my chair is. Okay. Now, I'm going to put my elbows on my lap. I need to make an X with my thumb. I need to push down and in. Okay? And I need to hold my hands as still as possible. My chin is actually going to be over the middle of the clay. So I'm actually hunched over the clay. Whatever you do, do not make a hole in it yet because you need to center it first. So you keep re-wetting the clay, holding your hands as still as possible. It's impossible to center it if your elbows are up here because your hands will wobble all over the place. It's impossible to center it if you're sitting too far back because you don't have the weight of the wedges. When you put your elbows down like this, it forms a triangle. Your elbows on your lap are the bottom of the triangle, and the apex, the point of the triangle, is your hands together. Since the triangle is the strongest geometric form and it's the most stable, it will hold the clay still. The other thing is you need to minimize friction. How do you do that? As soon as your hands start to drag or heat up, you get some water. Keep on doing that. And if there's no friction and you're hunched over the clay, and there's no air in the clay because you have wedged it properly, you will be able to center the clay. What's the next question? What kind of tools do you need to, need to be in your bucket? Okay. This is a wooden knife. This is a wooden rib. You don't need, it's okay, you don't need to write down because I'll let you watch the video after this. Okay, this is a wooden rib. This is a sponge. This is a toggle clay cutter. Okay? And the last one is, this is a potter's needle. Okay? Those are the five tools. The bucket should be about halfway full with warm water. Okay? How much water do you need in the bucket? Excellent. See how good I am? I remember that question. A little more than halfway. You don't want it so full that when you put your hands in, it overflows. But if it's too empty, you won't be able to saturate your hands. And you need to keep them wet for the process. What's the next question? Um, what will happen?
happen if you put a hole in the clay before it centers? Okay, if I put a hole in the clay and it's not centered, then the hole's not going to be in the middle, right? Later, when I go to raise up the walls, one side's going to be thinner and the other side's going to be thicker. As I'm rising them up, the thin side will, will rip, okay? And that's a very good question. Now, listen, how do you know it's centered? Is that one of them? Um, how can you use a wooden rib to help you center the clay? John, can you repeat it? Because it's really the okay. question in the main office. John, what I'm going to do is that, first of all, I can tell it's centered if there's no bumps at all. And there aren't. I, my hand doesn't bump up and down when I go like this. But at the bottom, my hand's kind of bumping, right? And we don't want that. So I'm going to take this rib, I'm going to put my right elbow on my lap, and I'm just going to scrape off the extra clay from the outside. Okay? Next question. Um, what side of the wheel do you work on when raising the wall? Okay, the right-hand side, but let me sink the hole first. Here's how you sink the hole. You make a shallow depression in the middle. You squeeze a little bit of water into the middle. You sink the your thumbs down, but not all the way. You need to leave a half inch floor, okay? If you don't leave a half inch floor at the bottom, you just made a tube with no bottom, okay? So now, the right hand goes on the outside. Make a bird with your hand. Your left hand, all four fingers go into the inside. If the hole's not big enough, it will get bigger as you push your hand inside. For this, your hands have to be wet. You're not dumping water on the clay, you just need to be wetting your hands. Don't dump water on the clay. Now you got your thumbs together. Now look, my right elbow's on my lap. See where it is? Over here, you, you got that? So now you're gonna squeeze the clay a little bit. You're pulling out of the floor. Okay, take the video camera here and look down the clay. I just pulled out a flat floor. You see that? My thumbs are together, I pulled out a floor. Where is my elbow? On my what? Flat. Okay, what next? Um, where do you raise your elbows when working on the wheel? Okay. What you do is this. I'm now going to turn the wheel on slow, so I'm pushing the, the, the lever all the way down. If your right elbow stays on your lap, if your thumbs connect the two hands, that right elbow will stabilize not just this hand, but also this hand. You see what I'm saying? Because otherwise you're going to shake all over the place. Okay, next. What's the next one? Um, what happens if you lift your right elbow off your lap while raising the wall? Well, I don't want to even think about it because I'll squeeze too hard and rip the clay, but I will show you how to raise the wall. You just squeeze a little bit and you raise them up. Now, this is the important thing. As you get higher, your right elbow, look at my right elbow, it stays on my lap. So what I'm doing is I'm continuing to raise up the elbow. I mean, I'm continuing to raise up my hand, not my elbow. Like this. So it's like, it's like this. You see what I mean? It's like this is a lever. If I raise my right elbow off, I'm going to be shaking all over the place and I'm going to get nervous and squeeze the clay too hard. So I keep my right elbow on the lap. Keep your hands wet. If your hands are too dry, it's going to drag. At about here, you're going to get really nervous. And what most kids do if they get really nervous is they squeeze the clay too hard and rip it, or they go too fast to try and get it over with because they're nervous. I'm going to tell you what to do instead. Loosen your grip a little bit. Make it looser and keep going. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Keep looser, keep going. Looser, keep going. Looser, keep going. Looser, keep going. Looser, looser, looser. When you get to the top, separate your hands. Don't slide them over the top or you'll ruin the rim. Now why is it that you have to keep going? Now, let me explain. If I get to about here and I stop, I now have a thin part down here and a thick part up here. This thick part is going to collapse the thin part because it's, this is just mush. It's very soft. So you don't want something heavy on top of something really fragile or it'll just collapse it. So you have to continue that pull all the way up until you get right near the top, and then you've got to separate your hands. You don't want to slide them over the top. So I'm going to do one last pull. Okay, squeeze it. No, I loosen, I'm getting nervous, so I loosen my grip. Looser, 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 looser. Keep it looser. Looser. Oh, I'm getting nervous, so I've got to loosen my grip. Keep loosening it. Looser, but I keep going. And notice, where is my thumb? It is on the right hand. So my two hands are always connected. That way, no matter what I do on this side, it's always supported on that side. That way it can't collapse because the two hands are, are working as a, as a team. Okay, what's the next question? Um, what does it mean to choke the neck of your pot? Okay, first of all, before we choke the neck of the pot, we're going to squeeze the extra water out. And this is very important. If there is standing water inside the pot, with my pot there isn't because I tend to throw a little drier than the students. Most kids, at this point, there'll be about that much water in the bottom. You don't want that.